So let's see, last time we got, we talked about if they give us the data in a different format, how can we find the two most important numbers that summarize a data set, which of course are the mean and the standard deviation. Where's the middle? And how far from the middle do the data points get on average? Those two are the most important summarization numbers I can give somebody for a set of pure quantitative data. So I got numbers here, blah, blah, blah. So the first thing we realized is that the mean is this formula, the sum of the x times p of x. We developed that formula together. Sometimes the math I did goes a little over people's heads because they don't understand why I'm doing it. But again, it was for a very simple example to show why the math actually works, and then I can do more complicated examples just using the formula directly. And, and remember, the formula used to be this, but of course, why are these really the same? Because what's on the bottom of the probability? Freaking it, right? The number of things that are in my sample. I like it. So it's in there. <coughs> Then we talked about, we started with this formula for a variance, and then I tried to get you guys convinced or to realize that that is not the greatest formula to work with directly. So we worked on this formula a little bit, and we ended up with this guy. That is the official variance formula we're going to use. So of course, if I ask for standard deviation, you just have to do this and then take square root. The most common mistake is people forget to square the poor little mean. So don't forget to square the poor little mean. I like it. All right, let me stop there for a second. This is where we left off the class before we did the probability quiz last time. Okay, so this is section 4.1 and 4.2. So today we're going to focus on, incredibly enough, section 4.3. Section 4.3, all right, all right. So section 4.3 kind of goes back to something we've already done. You guys remember, I had to be really specific in the problem, like a problem on the probability quiz about you have four people, what's the probably the first one doesn't like this, or the first one thinks this way, and the last three don't. You guys with me so far? That should sound familiar, hopefully. Uh, so I had to be really specific about probably the first one thinks that way and the last three don't. And the reason I have to be so specific is that problem is relatively easy. You just it's, it's, I want this guy to think this way and this guy to not think this way and an and of course means multiply. multiply. Something that some of us forgot for number one, but now you can make corrections. Um, Here's the problem. What if I said the probability to four people? If I choose four people, let's say the probability that they think a certain way is 0.2. So what's probably that they don't think that way? 0.8. That's crazy. Everybody still with me? This is the kind of problem we've looked at a dozen times and I've made up stuff about Brussels sprouts and North Korea and all that kind of business. Uh, they think a certain way is 20%. They don't think that way is 80%. I choose four people at random, uh, and then I want to know what's probably that exactly one person thinks that way. Now this is a much harder problem than this. Right, this is old news. This is the more. This is the new news. This, was a, this is a relatively simple example. So again, I, I like to start with simple examples, explore the math of it, see if there's an easier way to do more complicated problems. This is what I try to do. All right. It's a good goal. Sometimes you get there. So let's analyze this thing. Uh, the probably exactly one thinks this way is not 20%. It isn't. That's the probability that one person thinks this way. This is pick four people. What's the probability that exactly one of them think that way? That's a more complicated probability problem. <coughs> so what is one way for this to happen? Okay. 
No, no, no. What is one way for this to happen? Exactly one of them. You pick four people. Let's say we line them up on the back wall. Person one, person two, person three, person four. What's one way for one of them to think that way so the other three don't? Yeah, so it could be think that way and then these guys don't. Or... How else? Yeah, maybe it's the second dude that thinks this way and the other three don't. Or maybe it's the third one. Yeah, there. And the other three don't. Or maybe it's the fourth one. I like it. All right. So to do this officially then, how do you find the probability of anything? You have to add all the probabilities that match what you're looking for. So what am I looking for exactly one? Well, how many probabilities match that? Four of them do. Why is this list four things long? Because there's four ways to choose one person to think that way. The first one, or the second one, or the third one, or the fourth one. Right. Yeah, I like it. All of these look like, let's see if you guys get this, every single one of these algebraically, each one of these, looks like t times t naught to the third power. Right, the probability of those. Let me call, let me do this, let me get you guys used to this. Let's call the probability of t, let's give that the letter p, little p. And we'll call the probability of not t, we'll call it q. Get you guys used to p's and q's. I like it. So what would each of these look like then? It would look like uh, P, Q, 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 P, Q, 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 P, Q, 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 P. Is that, is that cool? These are the situations that correlate to at least one thing's that way. These are the probabilities that correlate to that. Right, either the first one is what I call a success. So little, little P is the probability of success. Success doesn't have to be a happy thing. Success could be finding a dead body. It just depends. Success just means what is it you're looking for. And it's related to the probability of getting that thing. So it doesn't have to be a happy thing. Um, and of course, Q is the probability of failure, not getting that thing. So there are four ways to achieve one person out of four thinking that way. Each of these mathematically. Now let's write this. What are each of these? The math is just going to come out to be what for each one of these? What is it going to be? What is P times Q times Q times Q? What's a better way to write P? Q, Q, Q. P, Q, Q. P, Q, Q. Not exactly a better way to say it, but it's a little Q, dude. Is that cool? And, and so why do I multiply here? Because this is the first one is a success and the other three aren't. Or, so what am I going to do with each, each of these? Or this, or this, what does or mean? Add. So I would add this, add this, add this. So altogether, how many PQ cubes do I have? Four. Four of them. All right. So how... Can you see how this is immediate from the question? I want exactly one success, which means I have to have three failures. So I could have just went straight to P times Q cubed. All right. The only number that I really need help with is that number right there. Because I don't know if you guys realize, this list could get stupid long really quick. So let, me, let me build this up into something we're going to have to use a calculator for. There are a few things I'll let the calculator do for us, and one of them is counting up to a million or something, or even beyond that. Right? I'm going to let the calculator do that for us. We don't have time for that kind of shit. Um, so let's say I, uh, let's let P be the probability that somebody's left-handed, and Q, let's make it the probability that somebody's not left-handed. And we know that the probability somebody's left-handed is about 11% still, so the probability they're not left-handed is 89%. Okay. So these have to be given to you. Let's say now we choose, uh, let's do 35 people randomly. 
<laughs> and I don't know what's probably that exactly. Uh, what you got, Jeff? Exactly four of them are left handed. Lefties? How to spell that word? You know what I mean. I like it. I always get somebody to ask about well, what if somebody lost their left hand? Well, then they're not left handed. I mean, that's, right. So that's why left handed, not left handed. I don't want to put right handed here because that doesn't capture all of the opposite. Sorry. Say not left handed for ambidextrous people, not that kind of business. Give my right arm to be. So this is going to suck. This one, holy shit. I mean, please start thinking about this. Give me one way that exactly four out of 35 people can be left-handed. So exactly four successes. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Maybe the first four, right? And then, and then the other 31. Or maybe the middle four. Or maybe the first two in the last year. Maybe the first one, the 17th one, and... Do you guys understand how freaking long this list is going to be? Oh, oh, holy shit. But that number that says how long this list is, where will it end up going? I already know what all of these are going to look like. I don't know what they are yet. I'm not going to list them, and I don't want to list them. But I know what they're all going to algebraically condense to be. What would they all have to condense to be like we did this? P to the, the fourth. Because I want four successes. Where are the P, where are the four P's going to be? I don't know. All right. That relates to how long this list is going to be, is how many ways there are to do that. That's a counting thing. How many ways can you do this? And that's something the calculator should be completely ready for. Right? It's basically its freaking job. Q to the Y 31st, because of course there are 35 people. Right? Either you are left-handed or you are not left-handed. Period. I'm waiting for anybody to come at me with anything. What if you got three hands? Well, left, right, and then the other one's the center, I guess, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> left one, left two, and then right one? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody have a question? Everybody good? All right. So this is the one place, the one place I will allow the calculator to do the work for us. Right? You guys are like, it's about freaking time, dude. Get with the times, my friend. Shut up. It's better to do the work by hand to see what goes into something than to let a little magic box do all the work for you. If you disagree, I don't care. Um, so how do I figure that out? There's a method called combinations. Now, if you read the book... The book goes into something. I'm going to show you what it is, but I'm not going to make you responsible for being able to use it. There is something called a factorial. This is an interesting mathematical idea. So I want to show you this, but then I'm not going to make you responsible for it. But if you see it in the book, now you understand it's not punctuation, really. It's a weird symbol they use for this. So here's what a factorial is. Seven factorial. So it looks like seven, but... This means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 28 factorial would be 28 times 27 all the way down to the 1. So if you see this symbol as you're reading this section, you know what it means. And then you say to yourself, oh yeah, my teacher said that's what it means. And not to worry about it, because he's going to show me something on the calculator right now. Right. Okay, so there's a little formula that's built using these exclamation marks, these factorials that I'm not going to worry about making you do, because it doesn't really show you much of anything. The thing that I really want you to understand is, the number that we're going to get from the calculator that goes here would be how long this list is. So of course that's, I'm going to add this to this to this, I'm going to add a bunch of these, and how many of them? However long the freaking list is, that's how many of them. So if I could just have this calculator tell me how long the list is, I'm going to put that number right there. All right, I like it, I like it. So here, let me, let me turn this little dude on. Oh, do I calculate this? Actually, I do. So if you need to borrow a calculator, we have a little worksheet later here, so you might want to borrow one. How many did I bring? I threw in there six, it looks like. Oh, 
Ooh, I like this. This one says, do not remove from the MSC, and Jeff just said, it's mine. Too bad. You don't want this good at call. You don't want the stolen one. Okay. You want the stolen one? Like Make sure they have good batteries. I hope. That's it. If you didn't get one, just get near somebody that's got one. checked it out yet. The second most important button in this class, or the second most interesting button related to this should be, I mean, stats obviously the first most interesting button. We use that one a lot. Another one knows this really interestingly named math buttons, like let's do math, just something, something weird's going to happen. So everybody hit that math button. And you get this. See that math button right there below your alpha button? Little math button. Push that little math button. You should get this. Now, now, real quick, just to point this out. If you didn't realize this, I, I want you to realize something. See that very first one? So watch. Point two three one four. Let's see if we can do this. To a fraction. Hey, it's a reduced fraction. Uh, now you see why I don't let my math eighty eight students use this shit. So if you didn't know you have fraction buttons, your calculator can do fractions for you. That's a nice calculator. What I want to do, now what, what counting is fundamentally, fundamentally related to probability. So if you go over to probability, the one we're going to use, remember this is called combination, so it should kind of make sense, the one we're going to use is the third one down. So let me ask you this. The N and the R up there, the N is what it always is. For this problem, what would N be? What would N be for this problem we're looking at? 35. There you go. N, what does N mean? The total number of things I'm looking at. Well, how many things am I looking at? 35 people. Right. So N is 35. R, we normally actually call it X in math but R is used in other disciplines. R is the number of successes that I want. And how many successes did I want? Four. Four. So in this case, uh, X, so what the calculator calls R, Four. it's four. So the actual setup for this formula would be this. 35 choose four. I love how that flows. 35 people choose four of them to be left-handed, yes. The total number is always. Yeah, so what's the total number for this problem? 35 total people I'm looking at. I like it. So to do this, and remember, that's the number that's going to go here. Oh, poor little dude, no attention. So 35 choose 4 times P, which is 0.11, to the fourth power times q, which is 0.89, to the 31st power. Now that's, that's what this formula would look like for this problem. 35 people choose four of them to be successes. So how many successes do you want? Four. I love how it's repetitive. How many failures do you want? The freaking rest of them. I love this formula. You could read it as a sentence, which you can actually do with just about every formula there is. But this one is really in your face about it. This is a formula that some teachers just skip because if there's a button in the calculator you push, it'll do it for you. And I know as a student, you've got to compete against that desire. Let me get the freaking answer quick. This one shows you what goes into making that answer. 
You can think physically about, I would make the list and do this, but I don't want to. And then a calculator count it for me. So what would this look like? Let's say, bam, come back to this screen. You can hit second mode, which is quit. It always brings you back to the nice home screen. So everybody back there that's playing along with me. So now you would have to put 35. Then go back to math. Probability. And pick that choose one, number three. Don't worry about National Public Radio. That's a different thing, NPR. Choose number three. 35, choose four. Now, if you have the older calculator, I can't remember what it looks like. I think it's got... Yeah, it just has the NCR in the middle. Like, If you have the newer one, you have to remember to push over to get out, out of the bottom there. Then I would say times 0.11 to the fourth. Hit the over button to get out of the exponent. Times 0.89 to the 31st. So that is what this looks like in the calculator. That's how you input that stuff. Is everybody... That's playing along with me right now. Is, is everybody doing okay? Can you find those buttons? I like it. And then you just hit enter. See what happens. There you go. About 21% chance almost. 20.7%. Now we're... Uh, yes? 0.11 is on... Is it on the... No. Uh, it's in the regular... No, you don't want that, yeah. So you just say times 0.11, and then you would say to the. Yeah. To the fourth, because you want four successes. And then I come down again. And then come down again, exactly. Times 0.89. Yep, to the 29, to the 31st, I like it. You guys, how are we doing? That, oh, what's up? Oh, that's not good. Holy crap. All right. You got even worse than you thought. It's times 10 to the 61st power. So oh. you just forgot to make 89 a point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everybody else okay? All right, all right. Now, real quick, how long do you think this list would be? Somebody give me a guess. How long do you think this list would be if we listed it all out? Like a million. A million. 5,000. Three, because that's what I'd stop. <laughs> I don't blame you. How many looks does it take to say? So if I just do that part of this, let me delete this, the rest of this stuff. You can do it, Jeff. Can you, Jeff? We're going to find out. Ooh, look at you go. Oh, shit, you went too far. Screw it. So we do 35, choose, four, 52,360. A little bit less than a million, but I always appreciate the million guess. Seems like a good, just general. It's a lot, okay, a million. Uh, but, I mean, 52,360 ways to do this. That's what that means. So that's why it's the coefficient. There's 52,360 of these that I would add together. So, of course, that's the coefficient. Just let that make sense. So like I said, there is a little formula in the book that involves factorials that you can calculate that number four, but I just don't think it's very conceptually important to do that. Okay, I like it. Let's do another problem together, and then I've got a little, I'll let you guys uh, work on this little handout. Come down, there you go. So let's say the probability. Well, let's say this. Let's say, uh, what you got, Jeff? 78% of the squirrels in Central Park are neurotic. Neurotic. They have a mental health condition. 
I love talking about the mental health squirrels. Why not? Uh, we randomly select uh, 22 squirrels. What's the probability that exactly, exactly what, Jeff? I don't know. Exactly 15 of them are neurotic. So take a minute, identify for yourself N, P, Q, and X. Those are the elements I have to throw into my formula. So it's a really good idea to just take a second and summarize them for yourself. talking about neurotic squirrels today. That's how life goes. Tell me out, what's N for this problem? 22. The total of 22 squirrels I'm looking at in this case. What's P? Little P. Yeah, probability of success. I'm looking for neurotic squirrels, so that's the probability of success. Is that's probability 0.78. So what's Q got to be? Point 22. And, and what's it look like? It's got to be true about P plus Q. P plus Q has to be 1. That's what we keep being careful about because we split the group into P's and Q's. So when I add them all up, it's got to be 1. I'm not, I'm not leaving anybody out. No squirrels are left out. Either they are neurotic or they ain't. Just a little bit. Then he is. Uh, and what's X? Good. X is the number of successes that I want. So let me, I haven't done this yet. Let me write the formula in general. And almost always, the formula looks a little worse than the actual using of it is. What do I mean by that? Well, the formula is going to be N choose X. That part makes sense. I got so many, I want to choose this many specifically to be successes. So how many successes do I have? X of them. Here's the weird part. How many failures must I have then? Almost N minus X. That's the part that throws people off in the formula. But in this case, how many successes do I want? 15. So how many failures am I going to have? Seven, because there's seven squirrels left, right? That's what this says. This says 22 minus 15 would be seven. So that just means the rest. Yes, ma'am? What does this C stand for? Choose. And it's related to the number of ways to choose a certain number out of a bigger number of things. So the number of ways I can choose two people out of that row would be two, four, six, eight. Eight choose two. That's the number of ways I could choose two people out of that row. I like it. I like it. So now, throwing everything in the right place, I got 22 squirrels. I want to choose 15 of them to be neurotic. So I want how many 0.78s? How many of those do I want? 15. I just said that, right? I love how it repeats itself. I want 15, so I want 15 of these. So how many of these do I want? Seven. The rest. So try to plug that in the calculator, see what you get. One, two, we'll find out what everybody else gets. Ooh, dissension in the racks. You said what now? One, zero, oh, okay, same thing. I was excited for a second. It's kind of like it when it's. No, I got point one zero. Twenty two, choose fifteen. Point seven eight to the fifteenth. Point two two to the seventh. Yeah, on one oh two four. By the way, as evidence on that probability quiz, some of you guys have to remember how to round 
properly. When the next numbers of five or above, you round the number up. So it's never just truncated. It's never just cut it off. That's being a little dishonest. Is everybody cool with that? Did you guys get that? Point one, oh, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Yes? So for PX, would it be PC instead? Or since you're putting like 15? For, um, because you see where it says NC times PX, or? Yeah, NCX, this is the part that tells me how long the list would be. Okay. And then I want X of these, X successes. Okay. And then I want the rest to be failures. That's okay. kind of like how you can read that sentence. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So if some of you guys know about binomial PDF, if you don't know what I just said, that's a good place to be. I like it. If you know what I just said, I, I, I don't care. You still have to do this so that it actually is you doing at least some of the work, not just the computer, the calculator, right? But my last teacher, I don't care. I don't, I so don't care. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and try out the back of your grade sheet. There's a little problem there. Yep, that's it. Yep, four decimal places. I'm trying to get us ready for something we're going to use in the future. You're good? Oh, you don't have one. Well, that would be difficult. I don't think you did one for me. Oh, because you, you didn't take that, right? No. DeMello? Right. It's right there. So this is yours, but it doesn't really, since the quiz two isn't really there. What's that? Oh, poor old dude. Oh, let's see. Shoot. I don't want to give you somebody else's. I guess you can You can have this one. Yes, sir. I was wondering if I can get one since I wasn't here. Oh. Bring the quiz. What's your name again? Alex. Trent. Yes. Right, so this, is, this is yours, but of course, without that, it's not really right. official yet. Yeah.